in the early 1900s. There were many African Americans. They were the first doctors, the first lawyers, the first professionals in their field. And many of them could not come and stay in Martha's Vineyard because of segregation, unless they happened to have friends who had homes here. And there were very few fam black families that had homes in the early 1900s in Martha's Vineyard. As the numbers of blacks grew who wanted to come, there was really a need for an inn. And I believe there were a couple of other smaller inns, but none the size of Sherrick Cottage, none that offered all the fabulous meals that Sherrick Cottage had. In 1917, when my great-grandmother Henrietta died, they had the main house that they had built to start the inn, and then they converted other rooms so that they ended up with about 12 guest room, including a large dining room where they served delicious meals, breakfast and dinner, and they were excellent cooks. When she died, her daughters, Lily and Sadie, basically took over the running of the inn, overseen by Grandpa Shera, Child Shera. He and his wife first came to Martha's Vineyard because being a devout Baptist, he joined the Tremont Temple Baptist Church. I believe he joined in the late 1880s, and that was the first integrated church in America. And they must have had Baptist revival trips down to Martha's Vineyard, and he worshipped here. He fell in love with the island, and in 1903 they bought the existing cottage, Shera Cottage, and his wife, Henrietta Merchant, opened up a laundry. And Charles Shera, being in the hospitality uh, business, decided to open an inn. And that's when he opened Shera Cottage. And we can date Shera Cottage to the 1912 season because he wrote a letter back to Hampton just telling them what he was doing with his life. And in this particular letter that was written in April of 1913, he says the previous year, he opened an inn in Cottage City in conjunction with their laundry that was at that time 10 years old and very successful. Over the years, we had very many famous people, such as Paul Robeson stay here and Ethel Waters, and we actually had a guest book going back to the 1920s with their names and their signatures. Unfortunately, that book was taken from us. I, I now have a book um, from the 30s, and that book was signed by people like Harry T. Burley and Adam Clayton Powell, who was to be the congressman eventually one day, and Lillian Avanti, who's considered to be the first worldwide recognized African-American opera singer. When I think back to Sherrod Cottage, it was really not just the hub of the African-American activities in Oak Bluffs over many years in the 20s and the teens, but it also was the hub of our family, maybe for dessert, maybe for dinner, certainly for some of the activities that happened at Shera Cottage. But everybody always ended up here.